Now this is the brand new BMW X3M with the S58 engine. It's got the stock intake which is completely different to what we're normally used to. Uh, we'll explain a little bit about how that works and then we'll show you what we did to try and improve on the design. So this is already loose and the strut brace has already been removed. So I'll show you the airbox. So as you can see, the airbox sits on top of the engine and it's very different to what we're normally used to. You've got four filters which are integrated into the top and you've got your two air feeds, one on this side which feeds from the front and you've got the other air feed which is right here which feeds from the front just behind the grills. The air goes into this middle section and then it's sucked through the filters into two chambers so you've got two separate air boxes, one here and one here. They then feed separately into the turbos. So you've got one feed here and the second feed here into the two turbos. Now, we looked at this for a while with Dread, to be honest. Um, it's so unusual. There's really not a lot more you can do with it in terms of change the fundamentals of the design. It does work quite well because you've got a direct flow path from the cold air feed straight into the filters and then straight out into the turbo. So in terms of the flow orientation, it's pretty good. There's not much directional change. So what we thought we'd do was to try and increase the volume, but on analysis, the distance between the top of the airbox lid and the underside of the bonnet is very small. We're talking like maybe five mil at the most. So changing that wouldn't have made much difference. And that also actually would have upset the flow path unless we changed the base completely as well. And the trade-off between a completely new design and what we'd gain in terms of the efficiency of flow was so small that we thought, okay, what we'll do is we'll change the filters, make higher flow filters, so less resistance, leave this airbox as it is, because it's a good design, and we'll provide the system with big scoops in the front to force air in. So that would then basically make these two feeds less restrictive because you're forcing air in. So the airbox isn't having to suck through those uh, feeds, but it's being fed forcefully with the scoops. Um, we'll now show you our filters, our scoops, and the carbon uh, airbox lid which we've made. So we've installed three of our new filters. Uh, these filters have been custom made using the same material that we use for our other filters, the cone filters. Uh, they're less restrictive than the stock paper filters, so allows the turbos to, to breathe with less drag. Um, I've installed three. I'm going to take one out to show you how easy it is to fit. So here's a stock one on this side. It has like a clip mechanism, so you just raise these clips up. These clips lock the filter into place. The frame comes out. And that's your stock paper filter. And then it's quite simple. The new filter is exactly the same dimensions. It has a rubber ceiling structure around it that slips into the frame like that. And then the entire frame just goes back into position and then locks with, with the two clips. That's it. Simple. So with the filtration de-restricted, we then focused on how to provide the airbox with cold air. So as you're driving, forced air is then into the, uh, moved into the, into the filter area. So at the front now you can see the two scoops that we've, we've designed and installed. Uh, as you may know or may not know, we have scoops for many of our systems. These are our conic scoops for our designs and they all follow the same sort of design language. They're curved continuously, so you haven't got a flat face. Also, although they're quite large, because they're curved on the back, the airflow as you're driving is able to move around the back of the scoop, so you don't get any heat spots on the radiators. So you don't have any uh, issues with cooling. Um, the airflow is smoothly able to transverse through the scoops into the feeds, which then goes up into the airbox. They're all pre prepared carbon fiber as normal. And then finally is the airbox lid. It's exactly the same as the stock airbox lid. So we haven't compromised 
on the flow. We've kept it the same, but obviously it's carbon. So uh, despite looking really nice, it does allow the sound to be transmitted better. So you will hear the engine no uh, note when you're accelerating. So we'll screw this down and put the strap brace on and show you what it looks like. This badge is transferred from the stock airbox lid and can be put easily onto our system. We've put the strut brace back into position, uh, the screws are back onto the airbox lid and the grooves are back into place. So that's what it looks like with the complete installation. You can actually now see how deep the strut brace travels through the airbox lid, which gave us that extra complication when thinking about how to redesign it. So given the available space, it's actually a very good airbox design. We did do a back-to-back -back test in acceleration between the stock system and our filters and scoops. We found that with our system in place, there was a 0.2 second improvement in acceleration between 60 to 130 miles per hour. So you get that performance increase. You also have a sound improvement. You can hear the engine better with the system. Uh, it's a good overall package given the restrictions in place. For more information on this intake, you can look at our website or contact your nearest eventually dealer.